Hello everyone, I'm Shiba. In my previous lecture, I explained the nature and scope of human geography. In this segment, we will study about the people of the world, the real wealth of a country. Population geography is a division of human geography. It is a study of the ways in which spatial variations in the distribution, composition, migration, and growth of population are related to the nature of places. It involves demography in a geographical perspective. What is demography? It is a study of human geography. It analyzes the dynamic population, that is one that changes over time or space. It encompasses the study of size, structure, and distribution of the population and spatial and temporal changes in them in response to time, birth, migration, and death. Population geography is a data-rich field in, of this discipline. It is because most nations conduct comprehensive national census around every 10 years. The demographic characteristics of any area are indicative to the population distribution and density. People tend to settle in regions that favor their cultural and physical needs. Hence, the density and distribution is uneven throughout the world. Broadly, 90% of world population lives in about 10% of land area. The 10 most populous countries of the world contribute about the 60% of the world's population. Of these 10 countries, six are located in Asia. Most of the people lives north of equator because two thirds of the land masses are there. We all know the developed nations are all belonging to these three major continents, North America, Europe, and Asia. The given graph shows that China is the most populous country and India ranks second, followed by the USA, Indonesia, and Brazil. Land has the potential to provide us with all our needs. However, it has limited capacity to support people living on it. Hence, it is necessary to understand the ratio between the number of people to the size of land. The ratio between the land and the number of people is defined as density of population. So density of population is defined as the number of people living per square kilometer. It is population upon area. We can identify the different regions of the world of high, medium, and low density on a world map. The given thematic map reveals five major densely populated regions of the world. Can we recognize these regions on this world map? Yes, East Asia. This is the coastal China. South Asia, predominantly most of India. Western Europe, D this includes industrial clusters of this region east coast of the United States of America, and the fifth region is the Southeast Asia. Certainly, there are a set of factors which are responsible for their distribution. So the factors influencing the distribution of population are as follows. First, the geographical factors. Second, the economic factors. And third, social or cultural factors some of the physical factors affecting the population are availability of water, relief features, climate, and soil. Before we look into the factors individually, I would like to tell you 
that the factors operate not in isolation but in combination with each other. It is the interplay between the physical, economic and cultural factors together. To begin with, geographical factors, that is, availability of water is the most important. Water is the basic requirement for the sustenance. Early human settlements were around the fresh water, such as riverbanks. The rivers provide fresh water, which is essential for human activities. Many examples can be quoted to explain this point. Two thickly populated cities on riverbanks are London and Delhi. You can see the beautiful but thickly populated city of London on the banks of River Thames. And Delhi on the banks of River Yamuna. Relief features play a vital role in influencing the population distribution as well. The main concentration of human population are confined to the areas marked by flat topography. The fertile plains always attracted the people. It is interesting to know that in Egypt, 98% of its total population is concentrated forming a ribbon along the Nile River. Mountains and hilly regions do not favor agricultural and industrial development. Hence, the population is sparse. Hot deserts, for the matter of fact, repel the population concentration as well. Of all the geographical factors, climatic conditions are perhaps the most important. It influences directly and also indirectly. Regions with extreme climatic conditions are sparsely populated. Of all the geographical factors, climatic conditions are perhaps the most important. It influences directly and also indirectly. Regions with extreme climatic conditions are sparsely populated as hot and cold deserts are uncomfortable for human habitation. For example, the regions of northern Norway, Sweden, northern Canada, and northern expanse of Siberia. With less seasonal variations, more population is attracted. Mediterranean region are densely populated. The climate affects the fertility of soil, location of industries, and many other economic activities. That is how it affects the distribution of population indirectly as well. Another very important factor affecting the distribution of population is soil. It is important for agricultural activities. Therefore, the fertile land is thickly populated. Cold deserts are hardly inhabitable due to permafrost soil. What is permafrost soil? A thick subsurface layer of soil that remains below freezing point throughout the year occurring chiefly in polar region is permafrost soil. So the regions of cold desert are not having a thick population. Let us have a recap of what we have learned so far. We have learned people the real wealth of a country. The ratio between the number of people to the size of land is known as the density of the population. Factors affecting the distribution of population is a third thing that we have learned. So far, we have learned only the geographical factors. Let us now learn how economic and cultural factors are affecting the population distribution. Location of mineral and energy resources has led to dense population concentration in the parts of the world. Kalgoorlie, a gold mining town in the Australian desert is a very good example in this regard. Many more examples can be cited from elsewhere in the world. However, the influence of 
mineral and energy resources on population distribution depends upon wide range of social and economic factors. Some of these factors are the demand in the market. Second, capital for the development, that is, the infrastructure. And thirdly, the transportation network. Each stage in economic development was marked with changes in population density and distribution in that particular region. Industrialization and urbanization brought redistribution of population through migration. Apparently, high economic activities attracted and these develop into industrial hubs. The commercial activities such as trade and transport network has redistributed the population. With this development, mega cities emerged. The most significant change in the pattern of population distribution is the political factor and the government policies. In support to this point, let us be surprised to get acquainted to this fact that we are oblivious of. In the late 1960s and 70s, about 10 to 15 million people were forcibly located to the rural communes in order to ease pressure on urban settlement. Yes, they were forcibly relocated to the rural communes in order to ease pressure on the urban employment. Relocation is a common feature of post-partition. Several million people, as we witnessed in case of India, were relocated from Pakistan and India, and Sudanese as a result of civil war. Expulsion of Asians from Uganda in early 70s are a few examples to mention. Whatever may be the reason, the population distribution is uneven through the world and is changing every passing moment. All these factors leads to the population growth. The movement of people from the place of their origin to the place of destination is known as migration. And this component of population has the potential to decrease and increase the population of any place. However, people migrate permanently or temporary. The streams of migration are varied. So let's see the streams of migration all over the world. The people migrate from one rural area to the other rural area. Or the people migrate from a rural sector to an urban sector. A very common feature that we see all over, that is, the people migrating from one urban sector to the urban sector which is close by or maybe a little far away. The fourth stream is the urban migration to a rural sector. Do you realize that the same person is an immigrant and an immigrant at the same time? An immigrant is a migrant who moves into a new place. And if a person moves out of a place is termed as emigration, no matter what. But both changes the population size. Let's look into this diagram. There are four components mentioned and all four of them together changes the population size of a region. These four are natality, that is birth rate, mortality, that is death rate, immigration, and emigration. This change can be positive or negative. It can either be natural or human induced. We register a positive growth when the birth rate and immigration have a larger size than the death rate and emigration. 
we register a positive growth at that time. The negative growth is registered when birth rate and immigration is smaller than the death rate and immigration. So we have to look everything holistically in order to explain the growth of a region, the demographic growth of a region. Population growth refers to any change in the number of inhabitants. If we calculate the population growth numerically, in actual numbers, it is population growth. And if we express it in terms of percentage, it will be the growth rate. Growth of population in actual numbers and growth rate is always expressed in percentage. Now, the three components of population change are natality, that is birth rate, mortality, that is death rate, and migration. The crude birth rate is expressed as the number of live births in a year per thousand of population. And the crude death rate is expressed in terms of number of death in a particular year per thousand of population in a particular region. Let us wrap up here and quickly glance at the topics we have learned today. In this module, we have learned about the factors influencing the population, the meaning of population growth, and how can we compute. Also, the three components of population change, the birth rate, death rate, and migration changes the size of population of a region. In the next lecture, I will teach you to compute the crude birth rate and crude death rate. I will also teach you how resource and technology has led to the population growth in the past years and its impact on the development. Thank you.